Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Welcome to the Australian Peacekeeping Memorial on Anzac Parade, Canberra, for the National Commemorative Service to mark the 25th anniversary of the United Nations Assistance Mission in Rwanda, Operation Tamar. I would also like to extend a welcome to the many Australians who may be watching this broadcast at home in cities and towns throughout Australia. I am Wing Commander David Brewer, and it is my great privilege to be your Master of Ceremonies for this morning's service. I would like to begin by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land on which we meet today, the Ngunnawal people, and pay my respects to Elders past and present, and I extend this respect to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Australians present here today. I would also like to acknowledge the men and women of the Australian Defence Force and our veterans that are present today, we thank you for your service. I will now broadly acknowledge our official guests. His Excellency General, the Honourable David Hurley, ACDSC, retired, Governor General of the Commonwealth of Australia, and Her Excellency Mrs Linda Hurley. Senator David Van, representing the Honourable Darren Chester, MP, Minister for Veterans Affairs, and Minister for Defence Personnel. The Honourable Shane Newman, MP, Shadow Minister for Veterans Affairs and Defence Personnel, representing the Leader of the Federal Opposition. General Angus Campbell, AODSC, Chief of the Defence Force. Vice Admiral David Johnston, AORAN, Vice Chief of the Defence Force. Rear Admiral Mark Hammond, AM, RAN, Deputy Chief of Navy, representing the Chief of Navy. Lieutenant General Rick Burr, AO, DSC, MVO, Chief of Army. Air Marshal Mel Hupfield, AO, DSC, Chief of Air Force. Commodore Justin Jones, CSC, RAN, representing Chief of Joint Operations. Lieutenant General John Fruin, DSC, AM. Major Charles McHardy, Mr. Charles McHardy, AM, representing Ms. Liz Cosin, AM, CSC, Secretary of the Department of Veterans Affairs. Mr. Michael John Rowe, Honorary Consul General, Republic of Rwanda in Australia. Senior representatives of the ex-service community, veterans, other distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. I would now like to acknowledge our VIPs for today's service, the veterans of Operation Tamar and the family members of the veterans who are here with us today. If you are a veteran of Operation Tamar, would you please stand? Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please be upstanding for the official commencement of the service with the mounting of the catafalque party. Catafalque party, quick, march!
Party rest on! I'm hardy left, turn. I'm hardy quick, march. Please be seated. I now invite Air Vice Marshal Tracy Smart, AO, a veteran of Operation Tamar, to deliver the call to remembrance. Australia has a long and proud history of peacekeeping and peacemaking, as commemorated in the memorial we stand before today. Like many of those present, I'm very proud to say that I've had the privilege of wearing the Blue Beret, including as part of Australia's contribution to the United Nations Assistance Mission in Rwanda. When we deployed to Rwanda in the mid-1990s, the country was recovering from one of the greatest atrocities of the 20th century their terrible genocide. The Australians who deployed on the peacekeeping operation to this war-ravaged country were witnesses to the aftermath of mass killings and scenes of unimaginable horror and brutality. Every day, many of us put our lives on the line to assist in keeping the peace in this unfortunate place. From those on the advance party who bore witness to the direct aftermath of these atrocities, to those who deployed around the country to keep the peace and offer assistance, to those of us who provided much needed health care to the UN and the local people, to those who kept us safe and fed and cared for, and those who witnessed the horrific events at Cabello Internally Displaced Persons Camp. We all did Australia and the Australian Defence Force proud. For those of us in the medical company, one of our biggest challenges, but also sometimes biggest pleasures, was looking after the children suffering from the aftermath of the genocide. We saved and positively influenced a lot of lives, but sometimes had to play God, watching people, including children, die due to our limited capacity, people who would have lived in a first world country. The contributions, professionalism and bravery of both contingents earned the respect and admiration of not only Australia, but governments and individuals throughout the world. However, the cost was significant. Today, we remember these sacrifices and thank all for their service and sacrifice, and also that of their families. We also remember that this service and sacrifice was not in vain. Rwanda has emerged from its darkest hours to become one of the Africa's most successful countries and one of this year's top world travel destinations. Not only did we have a positive impact on the country, but also at the individual level. One Australian peacekeeper made all the difference to young Theogene Gamiji, who at the time was separated from his parents in the Cabello Internally Displaced Persons Camp. Now Private Nagimi, who proudly serves in the Australian Army and is with us today, recalls, no day was easy, it was hard. I was always scared, hungry and intimidated. On the good day, a tall Australian soldier took a knee and offered me a piece of biscuit and the Australian flag patch from his uniform. I pray that someday I get to change someone else's life. We need only to hear these words to realise the profound impact of our work in the midst of this most terrible of human tragedies. It's the hand you hold, the life you save, the difference you make. In the short term and at the human level, we saved lives and prevented more tragedy. In the long term, we helped a country to get back on its feet. Today, we honour those who endured months of very difficult service in Rwanda and offer our thanks for the life-saving work they performed. 
we also acknowledge the profound contribution Australian Contingents 1 and 2 made to the country of Rwanda during their deployment. Thank you, Air Vice Marshal Smart. The commemorative address today will be delivered by His Excellency, the Governor-General. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. A great privilege for Linda and I to join you this morning as we commemorate, reflect, remember Operation Tamar and service in Rwanda 25 years ago. I join in David, with uh, David in acknowledging the Ngunnawal people as the traditional owners of this land, and I pay my respects to them and thank them for looking after this beautiful part of our country for generation after generation. Could I also acknowledge Senator Van, the Honourable Shane Newman, the Chief of the Defence Force, Angus Campbell, and other senior defence representatives, Mr Michael Roo, the Consul General, Honorary Consul General for Rwanda. Ladies and gentlemen, and again in particular to our veterans and their families who served in Rwanda 25 years ago. In the early 90s, uh, we in the Australian Defence Force, along with the United Nations, were going through a tumultuous time. For the UN, it was branching into a form of peacekeeping that it hadn't experienced in previous generations. More interventionist, more direct, and more inclined to use a mandate under the Chapter 7 to allow forces to use force. In Australia, we were coming out of a long period without deployments, a lot of home training, and we were rediscovering what it meant to serve overseas, to deploy a force overseas and sustain it, and in a different form, not in an alliance, but under a UN banner. This, of course, was an operation that occurred in my youth and my younger serving days. The contingents represented here today were commanded by my friends, my colleagues, people I'd served with, trained with, grew up with. And I served in my later time in, in the military alongside soldiers and NCOs who had served in Rwanda and though I was privileged to serve beside them. Today we are here to commemorate and acknowledge service in the United Nations Assistance Mission in Rwanda, number two, and to reflect on that service. 25 years ago last August, the first of 700 Australian peacekeepers, medical personnel, logistic troops, infantry and supporting elements deployed to Rwanda, a country gripped by genocidal violence. It was a place of ever-present danger. And although estimates vary, it is fair to say that approximately one million Rwandans were killed during this crisis. And the evidence of the mercilessness of the killing was everywhere. In shallow mass graves and in debris strewn, bloodstained churches and schools, places where people had vainly sought refuge. Millions were homeless made refugees and displaced in their own country or through having to seek safety outside Rwanda's borders. The Australian contingent's primary responsibility was to provide medical care to their fellow United Nations peacekeepers. But as Australians do whenever they venture off our shores, or indeed more recently on our shores, they look at a problem and they solve the problem in front of them. And the requirement to help treat, look after, and if they could protect Rwandan civilians, soon became a very important concern. 
As one member of the Australian medical team said, we saw a lot of bullet injuries, mine and grenade injuries. And many of the injury, of those injured and ill were orphans, wounded into genocide, suffering from illness, or the victims of accidents. One veteran remembers, remembers Rwanda as a country where there's an entire generation of children who don't have parents, who have no living relatives left. A desolate place. When we reflect on the often unsung work of Australian peacekeepers, certain images come to mind. Australians in the streets of Dili, patrolling the streets of a Somali village, or the historic Angkor Wat in Cambodia. All operations of that time. But a few images are as well known as those as the blue hel helmeted Australian soldiers caring for the displaced and the wounded at Cabello. Over 2,000 people were killed at Cabello. For many reasons, the UN mandate, rules of engagement, neither the Australians nor the Zambian infantrymen in location at Cabello could stop the killing. But in this intensely dangerous environment, they had to make life and death decisions and to exercise a cool judgment under fire. They risked their lives to help rescue survivors. Thankfully, no Australian lives were lost on this deployment. But many who served in Rwanda have been deeply affected by their experience since their return. Today, we remember the service and the sacrifice of all those who served on Operation Tamar and the price that many have paid for their courage and selfless dedication to the caring of others. We also acknowledge the families who shared in their experiences and for many of the difficult days that followed their return. It's now a quarter of a century since our servicemen and women deployed to Rwanda, but as evidenced here today, the memory of their service has not diminished. We thank them for their dedication, professionalism, selflessness and compassion. Optima is an important example of the difficulties faced by peacekeepers in a very ambiguous situation. It is fitting that the men and women of the Australian Service Contingents 1 and 2 have been recognised with the award of the Meritorious Unit Citation. I congratulate you for that and for your sustained outstanding service in warlike operations over the period July 94 to March 96. As a former serviceman, and as Governor-General, it was a privilege for me to sign off on that citation last year. You and your families are a credit to the Australian Defence Force and to our country. On behalf of all Australians, I thank you for what you have done for us, the United Nations and for Rwanda. Thank you. Thank you, Your Excellency. I now invite His Excellency the Governor-General to present the Meritorious Unit Citation Warrants. Two, Rear Admiral Mark Hammond, AM, RAN, on behalf of the Chief of the Royal Australian Navy. Lieutenant General Rick Burr, AODSC, MVO, Chief of the Australian Army. And Air Marshal Mel Hubfield, AODSC, Chief of the Royal Australian Air Force. Australian Service Contingents 1 and 2 have been awarded the Meritorious Unit Citation in recognition for sustained outstanding service in warlike operations for sustained outstanding service as part of the United Nations Assistance Mission in Rwanda on Operation Tamar over the period July 1994 to March 1996.
Ladies and gentlemen, please acknowledge our servicemen and women from Operation Tamer. I now invite Captain Amanda Garlick, a nursing officer in the intensive care unit during Operation Tamer, to deliver a reading. Rwanda. Prior to deploying in 1994, many of us would have struggled to identify this landlocked country in Central Africa on the world map. Deployment to Operation Tamar quickly changed this. As a unit, we were titled a medical support force. However, this belies the diverse skill sets represented across the contingents. Whilst the medical company was directly tasked with healthcare delivery, headquarters staff, engineers, infantry and armoured corps personnel were tasked with logistics, supply and force protection. However, such was the scale of the tragedy before us, virtually all personnel were called upon to administer some form of first aid during their deployment. It was indeed a team effort reliant on the sum of its parts. This deployment drew representatives from all services with few of us having deployment experience and little preparation for what we were to encounter. The challenges were many, but were met with a positive approach, a commitment to try and succeed, and often with a lot of ingenuity to find out what worked best. Integration of all team members did take some time, but we were united by a common goal. The care and protection we provided gave hope to a community in disarray, and the outreach teaching support provided to the Rwandan healthcare teams by spending time with them on the Kigali Central Hospital wards helps to help to enhance their nursing practices. Our ability to place primary health teams in other areas of the country helps support regional centres and the efforts to re-establish the health infrastructure nationally. All of this was achieved against a backdrop of uncertainty with ongoing political unrest the upheaval of the social structure, and a country still experience outbreaks of violence with members of UNAMIR there to bear witness. Memories of Rwanda definitely encompass the people we deployed with, the local community we provided care for, the natural beauty of this country, and of course, the opportunity to see the mountain gorillas. For all of us, the contribution we made in assisting the Rwandan people supported their efforts to commence rebuilding their country. Rwanda is a nation now that is one of stability, economic growth and improved health and education, leading the way for other African nations. Thank you, Captain Garlic. I now invite Chaplain Mau Mau Monu of the Australian Army to lead us in a prayer of commemoration. Let us pray. Ever loving and almighty God, we come before you today in this commemoration to offer our heartfelt thanks and gratitude for your love and mercies as we remember those that served with courage and honor in defense of our nation. We pray especially for those that have served in the Operation Tamer for their courage and unwavering commitment in every effort to bring peace to a torn nation. We pray for continual healing among the lives of those that are being scarred from this deployment and the atrocity committed against our own human race. As we pause, reflect and remember the sacrifice made by our serving men and women in this operation and all operations since. May their dauntless courage in defense of our country and their interests continue to be a reminder for us and our future generations of the cost of our freedom and of all the benefits we enjoy and an incentive to sacrificial service for all people. We pray for all our serving members, past, and present together with their families. Bless 
guide, uphold, and protect them, we pray. These we ask in the name of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Chaplain. Wreaths will now be allayed by official representatives. The first wreath will be laid by His Excellency, the Governor General of the Commonwealth of Australia and Her Excellency, Mrs Linda Hurley, on behalf of the people of Australia. will be laid by Senator David Van, representing the Minister for Veterans Affairs and Minister for Defence Personnel, and the Honourable Shane Newman MP, Shadow Minister for Veterans Affairs and Minister for Defence Personnel, representing the Federal Opposition. of Australian Service Contingent 1 and Australian Service Contingent 2 by Brigadier Wayne Ramsey, AMCSE, former Commander of Australian Service Contingent 1 and Professor Peter Wharf, CSC, former Commander of Australia Service Contingent 2. Australian Defence Force by General Angus Campbell, AODSC, Chief of the Australian Defence Force. Reeds will be laid by Rear Admiral Mark Hammond, AM, RAN, representing the Chief of the Royal Australian Navy, Lieutenant General Rick Burr, 
AODSC, Chief of Army, and Air Marshal Mel Hutfield, AODSC, Chief of Air Force. The next wreath will be laid on behalf of the Consulate of the Republic of Rwanda in Australia by Mr. Michael John Rowe, Honorary Consul General, Republic of Rwanda in Australia. The next wreaths will be laid by Lieutenant Commander David Menelis on behalf of the Naval Association of Australia, Brigadier Pat McIntosh, AMCSC, former Commanding Officer of Australian Medical Support Force, Australian Service Contingent 1, on behalf of the Royal Australian Regiment Corporation, and Wing Commander Lance Halverson, MBE, on behalf of the Air Force Association. The next wreaths will be laid by Mr Greg Mellick on behalf of the Returned and Services League of Australia, Mrs Judy Mack on behalf of Legacy Australia Incorporated, Ms Pat McCabe OAM on behalf of the Australian Federation of Totally and Permanently Incapacitated Ex-Service Men and Women, and Mrs Meg Green AM on behalf of War Widows Guild of Australia. The final wreaths this morning will be laid on behalf of all peacekeeping veterans of Australia by Mr Paul Copeland, OAM, on behalf of Australian Peacekeeping Service Alliance and Lieutenant Colonel Ian Lindgren on behalf of the Australian Peacekeeper and Peacemaker Veterans Association.
It is now time to reflect and to remember all those who have served and died in war. Please stand for the ode, which will be followed by the last post, one minute of silence, and then rouse. The ode will be recited by Warrant Officer Class 1, Brent Doyle, OAM, the Regimental Sergeant Major of Training and Doctrine, and a former Lance Corporal in the Combat Engineer Section during Operation Tamer. Hello, party A. Turn, turn. They went with songs to the battle. They were young, straight of limb, true of eye, steady and aglow. They were staunch to the end, against odds uncounted. They fell with their faces to the foe. They shall grow not old, as we to the left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them, lest we forget. Hello, party priests, hands, arms. <laughs> Show death, arms. Please remain standing for the Australian National Anthem, the final blessing and the dismounting of the catafalque party. Hello party, raise hands, arms. Oh, 
I now invite Chaplain Monu to offer a final blessing. Go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak, help the affliction, honour everyone, love and save the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and Holy Spirit, be with you and remain with you always, now and evermore. Amen. Thank you, Chaplain Monu. We began our service this morning with the mounting of the catapult party, and now the catapult party will be dismounted. Hello, party, outwards, head! Hello, party, quick, march! Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. That concludes the official national commemorative service to mark the 25th anniversary of the United Nations Assistance Mission in Rwanda, Operation Tamar. To our special guests today, the veterans of Operation Tamar and their families, thank you for being with us for this morning's service. You honour us by your presence. You are wonderful representatives of all those who served with you, and we are grateful for your service and sacrifice. Ladies and gentlemen, please show your appreciation. Thank you and good morning.